the whole world that we see is strongly linked by cause and effect. Things kind of combine together and produce a result. Cause and effect. Everything we do, haven't you noticed? All objects and events are controlled by cause and effect. They need to have a cause. The cause is normally a lot of things combining together and then producing one result. A lot of things add together and then produce one result. This is what we observe in this physical world. So this is the argument sometimes they use to try and prove God. They say, look, haven't you noticed everything must have a cause? We say, yes. Everything we know, everything we see around has a cause behind it. This thing caused this and then this happened and then this. They say, it rolls down the hill like that. Yes, yes, it's true. <coughs> then in that cause, surely, we can show you, we can prove God, because if everything needs a cause, the universe as a whole must have a cause too. Somebody must have caused it. So surely that is God. Now you see, straight away, as soon as they offer this argument, and if you've not thought well about it, you say, yeah, we proved God. <coughs> everything must have a cause, and the universe must have a cause, so that must be God. Fine, I found God now. I managed to capture God. It sounds so nice, doesn't it? You see, we are doing philosophy debate and we shouldn't be frightened. They sounded so good in the first instance, yes, 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 we proved God. And I'll show you how you can tear it apart. So how can you tear it apart? The first argument response to this challenge, this is the philosophy response, is this. You just now say that a lot of things combine together to produce one effect. We say yes. In that case, how can you be sure there's only one God sitting in the heaven saying, okay, I'm the cause. Maybe there's a whole assembly of gods saying, okay, I'll do the hand, you do the nose, I'll do the ear, we'll put it together, human being. So maybe there's an assembly, how can you be sure there's one God? Because you said everything, there are lots of things combined and produce one result. So how can you be sure there's only one God saying, hello, I'm going to set you off. There may be a whole bunch of them working together in an assembly or perhaps working well or not working well or going on strike even. It's an assembly line and producing the universe. How can you be sure there's one? You didn't prove that. See, straight away. It's, oh dear. This is still not the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge comes. Because somebody will say, ah, you started your argument by saying everything must have a cause. You say, yes, I started like that. Then my question to you would say, ask a philosopher. See, the philosopher is a very good thing. Never vilify anybody. Never say, you're a horrible monster, how dare you? They are thinking for themselves. Let them, the modern youngsters, think for themselves. So you said, everything must have a cause. Yes, yes, that's how I started my argument. And don't you see everything must have a cause? Yes, yes. Then my question comes from the philosopher to the person who wants to prove God is this. Who caused God? Because you said everything must have a cause. So God must have a cause too. So who is the cause of God? What made God? So in simple he's asking who are God's mummy and daddy? Because otherwise God wouldn't be here. So who caused God? And then you say suppose you discover a mummy and daddy they are super God or grandpa gods. Then say who is their cause? It goes on forever. You can never come to an end. So straight is, oh dear, we thought we found a solution to this serious philosophic issue of how they need prove God. Suddenly we discover that the argument we offered appears initially appeared so sweet and so straightforward. The moment you examine it in little detail, like saying there's a lot of cause, so there may be lots of gods there, how do you know it's one? And secondly, you just basically said, what is the cause of God? And we haven't given a proper answer. So you say, oh, God doesn't have a cause. Oh, no, no. You see, you started your argument saying everything must have a cause. You must hang on to that. Otherwise, we throw your whole argument out of the window. So who is God's cause? Say, oh, dear, dear. There's a third. See, I'm just showing you. You must see the depth. And you talk like this with, you, with your friends at school or university. They say, wow, you think well. They give you a third challenge. It's a third challenge. We had, <laughs> we had two heavy ones. There's a third one. Oh, yes, the third one. There are so many different religions, aren't there? So, if then, then they describe God slightly differently from each other, you know, one will give a different name and whatever. So there are so many different religions. So the philosopher will ask, which of your God created the universe? Because if you say Islam is the right one, then the Christian God must be wrong. And if it's Christian, then the other God must be wrong, and the Hindu God must be wrong too. So which of your God is the one who created the universe? There are so many of them. Which one is the right one then? Fight it out amongst yourselves. Sort yourself out first before you come to us. This is called playing one religion against another. This is used again and again in philosophy. Because there is a variation of points of view. So who, are, who is right now? So whose God created the universe? And then that means that the rest must be wrong. So the philosopher says, in that case, it appears the whole, of, whole lot of you are wrong then. Because you can't say that one is better than the other. The whole lot of you are suspect now. See, three... 
what appeared like a simple way of finding God suddenly discovered three challenges and they are positive, they are good challenges. So you say, oh dear, it didn't work, never mind, we'll try some other ways. So we try another way. Now this argument is called in kind of posh English, if you're doing A-level Hinduism, it's called <coughs> cosmological argument from the word coso in Latin, which means cause, causation. It's called cosmologic. It doesn't mean the cosmos, it simply means causation is the foundation. So we use the word of causation, cause and effect, and it suddenly crumbled. Three challenges came, zoom back, and the argument began to crumble. Fair enough. We are not going to give up, are we? We love God chap. We're going to produce him somehow. So we come up with a second argument. The second argument we give, or the, or the people of religion give, not Hindus, be careful, I have not brought Hinduism yet at all. I'm just telling you generally how people of religion try and respond. And this is mainly the Christian and the Muslim lobby. Hinduism is a different answer to all this. You say, well, we never brought Hinduism yet, not yet. You see why. That's why it really comes out very, very strong. The second argument offered by the theologians, these are the people from the Christian Muslim tradition, uh, the Jewish tradition, to try and prove God, is say, hmm, there's something else. 